Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. We're down in Deepest Kent at a place called Hawkehurst. Now, we're here to interview Tommy Flower, who helps us with our carp filming on big carp, and he's got some really good spring tips for you. But we were late getting here as usual. What else does a Totally Awesome Fishing Show do but turn up late? Tommy was there early, and what did he catch, Mike? He got a 23 pounds lovely scale mirror wasn't it really yeah, nice, nice mirror car nice fish and he's been experimenting with a few baits different techniques and things like that some stuff you may have never seen before so there's a bit of an exclusive this let's go and have a word with him and see what these exclusive rigs are that he's using it's worth watching come and have a look Well, Tommy, good to see you again, buddy. Yeah, you too, uh, mate. We had a good session last time when we were doing some winter carp fishing tips. Now it's time for some uh, spring carp fishing tips. I know last night you had a, you had a, a good surprise with a, with a fish, and you've uh, obviously had that carp this morning. Just tell us what actually happened, because we, we tried to get here. Usually, totally awesome fishing. We get here a bit late, as usual. Um, but unfortunately, we couldn't get here last night. Just tell us what happened. Um, all it was, really. sort of. I wanted to get down, obviously, before you so get set up and everything else. Decided I weren't gonna fish. I just thought I'd bait my spots and hopefully break the water rolls today. But um, I see a fish roll and couldn't couldn't resist couldn't it. Resist, yeah. So I put one out and sort of early hours of the morning, absolutely one toner rattled off it into it and it was yeah. like hitting into a train. This thing took me everywhere up and down the lake. Yeah. I had it on for about 15, 20 minutes. Finally got it in the net, realised it weren't a calf and there's a big cat sort of appeared. Really? Yeah, so it weren't massive, probably just just over the 20 pound mark, yeah. something like that. But they, Decent, yeah, yeah they hang nice. on. And have they got a few catfish in here, do you say? Uh, yeah, there's quite a few in here. Yeah. I think they got some, some decent sizes. That's good. And then uh, what happened this morning then? Because I got the text from you this morning that you'd already had one before. We were yeah. already on the road and he's already got one and can't stop this boy. <laughs> so what did you get this morning? Well, so after I had the cat, I thought I won't put it back out. I sort of put a little bit more bait out, thinking if they've been on the feed, then they would have cleared what I put out. So I put some more out. I overslept this morning, it's only my girlfriend rung me. I was supposed to be up at first sight and I wasn't. Yeah. Got up just after. I put my rods out, sprinkled a little bit of bait. I've done my left rod first and then done my right, just down the bush to behind us. And um, before I could even ring my girlfriend back, it, it, it was off. It's another one toner. Yeah. It, straight away you could feel it as a carp slowly plodding. So I didn't put up too much of a fight. I think I just woke it up as much as it woke me up. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, it's sort of got it in the net, a nice scaly one, went about £23, pound, but yeah, it's, it's nice. irrelevant when they look like that. It's yeah, it is, yeah. So the first fish of the session is yeah. always nice. Oh, that's good. And so, how long have you been coming here? Because you said to me you've been here a few times. How long, uh, over the years, yeah, you've been sort here a few of, years, haven't you? Well, we've been carp fishing sort of started on this sort of complex. There's a couple of lakes down the bottom, and um, and we first ever 20 out of the main lake. Yeah. And moved on to the, the Dove, which is it's called. And I had my first ever 30. And then could only do sort of come on here a little bit harder, the fish are a little bit bigger. And um, I had my first 40, although it weren't a true carp, it was a 40 pound Japanese blue carp. That's massive, yeah. yeah to everyone, me, that's huge. I'm used to catching 10 pounders. Yeah, that's a so, massive fish. So I've gone up through the stages, I saw both my biggest, like, biggest common and biggest mirror both out of this lake, 34 pound, 4 ounces each. That's yeah, that is huge. Sort of, I've had quite, I, quite a few 30s out, and um, I've been fishing here. So the whole lot since 10 years I've been fishing this lake for the last six years, I reckon. Oh, right, so you've had a good good bit of experience here. Yeah, it's just why I chose it, really. I, yeah. sort of, I know it quite well. I've done quite well on it. And when you can have them, there's some good fish to be had. Well, hopefully we'll get some for the cameras. Now, just uh, obviously this is a spring carp fishing tip video. Just tell us, we, we've got uh, we've said to the, the viewers that you've got some exclusive new type rig that you've been playing around with. Just give us an insight as to uh, what exactly that is. Right, we'll start at the sort of the business end. Um, 
it's the average carp rods really, three pan test curves, 12 foots. But do, they do you for most sort of fishing. Um, my reels, small sort of pit reels, double handle because I like back winding. I can't get on with the big old handles that crank around. Um, the line I'm on is just your, your standard 15 pound line. It's, it's sub line, the one I'm using at the moment. It sinks really well. So as long as you get that, it's sunk, it hugs the bottom and out of the way of the fish really. Yeah, the, the way I'm fishing at the moment, although I'm fishing sort of fairly close to like the far margin and my, my own margin, I want everything pinned down. It's, it's, I'm fishing, so it's, it's, it's shallow end up this end, so I don't want the fish coming into contact with any of my line. I want it all pinned down, kept quiet and out of the way, a bit of stealth really. Um, don't really need the back, uh, sort of back leads at the moment, so as long as you sink your line properly and it hugs, I tend to find that that does just as well. If the wind picked up a bit more and I was getting more tow or sort of things bumping into the line, then I would opt for the back, back lead, just to sort of pin it right down. I say, as at the moment, I think slack lines keeping everything simple and everything really just out of the way from the fish. I don't, I don't want to spook anything. Um, so I've fishing, me, me bobbins are all slack. I don't want no weight on my line, everything. As soon as I get a run, that, that'll go. I shouldn't really get no back drops. I'm fishing running leads at the moment. And um, this is pretty much it, really. So the rig that's been doing the damage at the minute that I had the catfish and the fish on earlier is um, a multi-rig. Everyone sort of knows different variations of it and I think it's just fine-tuning it to what you feel and what, what you like. I use it and my mate uses it and you look at the rigs and they're sort of completely different but yet still the same so um, I'll just show you my variation of it and hopefully it'll help you catch a fish or two. All you want to do is create a loop sort of the loop depends especially like I fish it as a pop-up so your loop depends how high your pop-up's going to be which I like one really short so, so just pull that down tight Snip that off. I had a pair of sharp scissors. So then, it's one of the easiest rigs. All you do now, pinch it together so it's nice and tight. I'll pick me a cut. And all you want to do is just slide it through the eye. Make sure you're facing away from the point. Leave that like that. And then, all you want to do is attach a little rig ring. One of them, that simply slides on over the loop. And pull the loop over the shank of the hook so that it sits on the inside. Pull down, so that's like that. I only pull down so it creates a little curve on the loop and then basically that is ready to go like that but um, I like to add a little bit of shrink tube into it just to sort of help hold everything in place and although that, 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 that rig's fine how it is it's just something extra I like doing and it looks a little bit more tidy let's cut three Little sections of tubing. So they're all three different sizes, but they're all for three different places. So um, once you've got your hook on, all you want to do is pull out the length you need to whatever length you want to fish it. I'll fish it a little bit long, so around, around that's fine. Snip that, and then I slide on the medium piece that you see me cut first, as that one's going to go over the eye of the hook. So you want to get your loop where you want it, I'll have it just past the point of the hook. That's where the, the loop ends on the shank. Put that little bit of tubing onto the eye. And then the next bit will be the longer bit. I ain't going to use the medium bit now because it's only a short gap. Take that bit out. 
And then all I do on this end is get another loop. Simple to do. Pull that like that. Cut the tag end. Pull the tubing back over the, the knot. All that does is keeps it nice and tidy. And just looks a little bit more neater. And now uh, all I do with that to finish it off, get a swivel. I prefer the, the ring swivels, just so it gives you another little bit of just added movement really. So you want to go through the big swivel and then over. And all that does is pulls down tight on itself and that's not going nowhere. So I've Using this rig I've caught fish up to 56 pounds with no problem, so the knots are all good and I'm happy using it. So I'll just strip that back just below the knot. I don't I quite like it when the actual coating crinkles up because it gives like the putty tank to grab onto. And all I want to do a bit of putty. I like using a big bit of putty, I don't don't care if it's overweighted, I, I want it to be 100% on that bottom and hold, holding deck. Hold that round. And as you as you can see that 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 spins. That's it's more or less a 360 degree. Whatever way it's coming, it, it can turn and catch hold. So it's a fish coming from behind it. it. It's quite easy, ready to turn and go in. Quite a nice, nice simple rig. And all you want to do with that now is put the kettle on. And then steam it all in place. I so say once you've got all your tubing and your party on and everything how it wants to be, it all comes down to steaming it now, getting everything in place. As you see, see the shrink tube and shrinking down there. I want to just kick it out just a little bit. So it sits at a sort of an angle, so as soon as I see that fish's mouth, I'm going straight in this bottom lip. And then if you steam the rest of the hook link, without dropping it, burning me hand. If you steam the rest of the hook link and the back bit, all that I'll do now is make that really stiff and rigid. Let it cool. And all, all, it just acts as like a sort of boom, and when your lead goes in, it's going to push me pushing away from the lead. And then that rig, and all that's going to be doing is sitting away from it, like that, with a bait attached, ready to go. And so I'll show you quickly how to attach my bait. Now, Tommy, one thing that occurs to me, I'm looking at this, yeah, and this is. I can see what you mean. Is that, that steam has made it a, a bit more rigid? Yeah. But camouflage green, green camouflage, even a putty camouflage green. Yeah, I can't understand why carp anglers use a bright bait. Why is that? Well, sort of. I don't want them seeing what I want to catch them on, basically. But with, with the bright baits, it's all trying to get a reaction from the fish and maybe dropping them down. But I think at the minute, it's, it's sort of your bright baits are doing well. But then so are your dull baits, sort of. We've got one that I've just come out and I've been doing quite well on the sea. Um, this is one of your secrets, Tommy, is it? Is it yeah, no, a revelation? This, or no, this one you can buy in the shop, well, you can buy on our website, but um, it's a completely different colour. You don't see many people casting that sort of near on black bait anymore. It's, and it, it's good for the bird life as well. You sort of sometimes go a little bit unmissed. But it's just doing something a bit different. It's, I don't mind turning up to late and again. Yellow's the one that's catching. Sure. I'll, I'll go and use pink or a, so, or a black one or just saying that. You want to experiment, you want to be different yeah, than everybody you want, else. Yeah, I want. So, most of my fishing's done on limited time, so I want everything to be working for me. And if I'm fishing the same as everyone else on the lake, you're going to be catching it the same as everyone. You've got nothing that sets you apart. Gotcha. So, if, if you think about sort of different hook baits and things like, like these ones, um, they've been quite heavily glugged in, in the krill liquid that I'm using at the moment. And they smell, as I say, if you if you smell that. Oh man, that's rank. Yeah. That, 
I go shark fishing, and I tell you what, we must catch a shark on a boilie. Glad. Yeah. That is pretty rank, that is. Uh, I want to try go with one of the black ones, as you're saying, go go against the grain and something a bit bit different, and say, they smell lovely. I think they're based on black tiger nuts, again, against the grain. It ain't your tooty fruities or... The standard. Anything. Yeah, just, just something a bit different, I feel. So, um, they are good. And they're proper buoyant, which is good. There's nothing worse than getting a pop-up on and you reel it in a couple of hours later and it's, it's sunk. It's, oh, really? Yeah. So that does happen then? Yeah, I've had it quite a few times on different baits. So all, all I want to do to attach that is put a dental floss through the rig ring. And that's just regular dental floss? Yeah, just, it? yeah. My mate swears by the minted one. I don't oh, think really? it makes any difference. So I think he caught a fish on it once and so it's, it's, it's all confidence. So that goes in that. All I want to do is so you don't uh, you don't drill it out or anything no, like that. No, no, no. I find sometimes if you pierce, them, they break? take they take water on. I always see. And then obviously then they can sink again. But with that, just simple overhand knot, pull down tight. And that's enough to hold that even with some distance casting as well. Yeah, I've, I've in France last year we was putting about 160 yards, and I was I was holding. Really good lord. So even though I I do that three times, I haven't really got reason to do it three times other than fisherman's luck oh it's just what well, i've always done it and so it's, it's never really let me down and then your two tag ends all you want to do snip them off make sure you snip them both at the same time so if you snip one and then go to do the other it pulled the loop out and i see yeah it, the knot won't go tight and then get a lighter Careful with your actual just gonna main melt line. The end of it, yeah, yeah all, you, all you want those just, just blob them down. Like so, squash it down, and as tight as you like. And that, that, and that, obviously the knot's never coming undone. And that is really your finished product. Something a bit different. Something that's caught me a lot of fish. Now that's that rig done, Tommy, that was an interesting one. And you're using dental floss, because I use that sometimes on my own sea fishing, so I know it's good stuff. What I want to know is, on your second rod, your second outfit out there, you've got quite a bit of particle bait you've been putting out there, so how are you going to rig up for that one? Yeah, I've got, got quite a lot of sort of particle baits and pellet, crushed boily, quite a lot of hull boily spread around, sort of. I've baited up and down the margin either side of the spot and then out to the island, so for any passing fish are sort of getting on it and hopefully all getting filtered into the where, where the hook bait is. Um, all I'm doing with that, where I've got so like many small baits and bit baits and that, I'm just using a, a short rig with um, a single bit of pop-up cone. And all, all that will do is literally, the, the rig will sit there and that's, that's just gonna be sitting just above it like that, weightless. And then any passing fish, that, that's gonna get sucked in and that hook's going straight up. Um, best way I've sort of fine fishing this is either you can use sort of PVA mesh bags and everything else but well I've got such a short hook link and a quite a tight baited particle spot I, I quite like using the um, solid PVA bags I think it gives you 100% like good presentation and I don't know, it's confidence I think in, in all sorts of fishing if, if you ain't confident in what you're doing you ain't going to perform as well as long as you're confident then you can, you can have it off I think um, for my bag mix, what I'm going to do is, well, I've got a bit of pellet in there. Uh, the boilies which I'm using at the minute, are the, the new ones on test from the bank bug I'm, I'm fishing with at the moment. All I want to do is put a few of them in there, get them all nice and crushed up. Pour that in with a pellet, just a little bit of extra flavour, a little bit of, sort of cloud in there. Different texture, so I'm, I'm not putting the particle in there because the particle I've got is is a bit wet at the moment, and I think it just melt the PVA bag straight away. All I'm going to add in with the pellet and the crushed boil is um some of the new hydrolyzed krill that we're, we're using. So at the minute, it's one of the only ones that are not cut. It's, it's sort of 100% natural and it's really thick and potent. It's, it's, it makes your hand extremely sticky. And a nice little bit, nice little helping of that in with that. So that's, that's all you need. Don't drop the lid in it. Uh, right. And then just 
a little stick or a pair of scissors. Just get that in there. And what that does, it just soaks all the pellets, soak it in. And it's, again, it's just making your bait work for you. I want, I want something to pull the fish into me rather than just sitting there and being like everything else. It gives that little bit of added attraction. So that, that stuff stinks. That's fine. And all I'm going to do now is solid PVA bag. Put a little bit in the bottom. Just lace the bottom out. Get all that nice and compact. That's a good thing with that krill liquid is it, it don't melt your PVA bags. I've done it so many times. So I've had different liquids and gone, ah, oh, it's not a normal base one and your bag melts and you have to start all over from fresh. Um, all I want to do now is get my rig and lower the bait in, making sure the hair's separated from the hook. I'm sitting fine. If you hold your lead like that, it, it gives you quite a bit of room to, to chop your stuff in with it. So, all I'm going to do now is fill that up. Just keep filling it and plugging away, just taking out all the sort of compact it all down. So when, when that bag bursts, that's going to be leaking the tractors all over the shop. Well, I've well filled it up now with the oil and the krill. My usual method of licking and sticking is it ain't going to hold as well because the oil is stopping it all from breaking down. So what I really want to do is, instead of trying to twist it, and get some PVA tape. So loads of different companies make it. Not that deer is quite cheap and you get a lot for your money. Just lick it and break that, being lazy, so I can't find my scissors. All you want to do is again hold it in place. Couple turns nice and tight. Right on top of the bag. And then again. Is there anything else you could put with stuff to stop that PVA breaking down? As in sort of liquids? Uh, or well, I did know somebody who wants to tell me you put salt in something, was it? Yeah, yeah. Does uh, that stop, do some reaction? Yeah, so if you're fishing sort of tiger nuts or maize or something like that, if you put it in sort of get a bit of water and add quite a lot of salt into it, so basically making it into salt water. Just them, it. Yeah, right? let them soak in it and then dry them off and where the salts it just stopped the actual bag breaking down. Oh that's interesting. Yeah. So we make we made done the same thing. Like before you used to there's a lot of places do particles now that are, you can buy ready made that are bag friendly. But be, before you used to always salt these baits so they didn't have to yeah. How many years ago would you say the PVA actually came into popularity? I mean it was about when I was younger but not the, to the degree it is now. Um, to be honest, it's always, ever since I sort of carp fish, it's always, been, yeah, yeah. it's always really been there. I'd say the interview that I've done when we were talking about sort of high protein baits, now, I've, I've never known a world where... You, 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 were, you know, for us it was a novelty. Yeah. We used to use your barbel fishing, but you know, now you've got tape, you've got string, you've got mesh, you've got, oh, you, so you've got many everything. Different... So and that is, that's your bag ready. So I ain't too fussed, normally I'd sort of plug the ends down for, for casting. Um, this one, it's only a short cast and I'm gonna put it out there as it is. Say that that 
and cast just went spot on. I don't think I could have got much tighter without hitting Graham anyway. Um, all I want to do now is just keep my line nice and sunk. A lot of people tend to pull tight, and uh, which you can move your lead. I find if you take a bit of slack out, drop your tip really low, and then pull up as your rod comes up. So you're not actually moving the lead, you're just working a bit of line in your hand. And all it does, it really helps it, it like get down on the bottom and hold depth. So once you, you've got all your line off your surface, a couple more times, and instead of sort of tightening up now, you want you want it to be sort of limp from your tip of your rod. So basically, I don't let it have as much slack as it wants. As you can see, it's more or less pulling straight down from the rod tip. And then people now go, oh, tighten me bobbing right up to it, so it's holding lead. All, all I want to do is line in the line clip like that, tighten up, and as you can see, the it's slack from gan sort of out away from the rod, and all your pressure's on the bit from the reel. So there's no real thing there. And that's, that's what you want, really. It's all nice and pinned out of the way. It's slack. He's in. I've He's got in. it, I ran it, I ran it. Fish, Tommy. Fish on. Which was that, over tight to the bank, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. What's that, I think that's been out there. Five, ten minutes. Ten minutes, I say, no more. Yeah. Just doing something a little bit different, adding that krill in. It just a little bit more attracting. You think it's a smell or flavour yeah, or something it, of it? It's just working for you, you've got something uh, that one gonna go as well. Just got something pulling the fish into you. It gives them a reason to home in on your bait. Not really doing much. He's coming in nice and easy at the moment, yeah? Yeah. Just sort of just plodding. Perch. What is it, Tommy? A perch. A perch? That's tangled me up. Yeah, nice. That's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, nice little stripe. And there he goes. He's lost in that net. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks he's free. That's mad. That was a proper run as well, wasn't it? It was, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Is that unusual for you, Tommy? I've never even caught a perch. Never caught a perch from here. Not out of here. Well, he's not a bad old perch, is he? No. I think he got creased up a bit with three pound test curve, but yeah. <laughs> it's a nice it's a nice looking fish here. Yeah. It's doing well to get past all the catfish, so. He was living dangerously on the margins, I'd have thought. So that's what I was saying about that rig, it's sort of, it probably hasn't homed in on the actual bit of plastic sweet corn, but well, I've got the krill and the pellet and everything else in there, it's come in, sucked it all in, and the rig's gone flying with it. So it's working to a principle. That's quite happy with that. Well, I'm happy with that perch, a bit, bit surprised, but it's working, it's fishing the area. I don't mind if it ain't just carp feeding, it's just build a pyramid, get everything feeding, they should move in. Um, wind's picked up slightly a little bit, uh, well, solid bow, I need to be really tight on that spot. So instead of casting the bow, what I'm going to do is punch a lead across onto the far bank. There's no one over there, it's safe to do at the moment. So the ground's going to stay on my rod here. 
and I'm gonna walk around and drop it in by hand so I know everything's spot on. There's no no room for any failure really. Hopefully it's all spot on on the money and away we go. So I've put it across on the far bank, just the bare lead, I've walked round, tied up enough of bag while I'm round here, and all I've done with that is I've just, just attached my line, just with a bit of PVA string to the end of a pole, and all I'm going to do with that is just lower it down and ease it on the spot. Perfect. Let's get round there now. Right, the, the bait's on the spot. All I want to do now is a little bit more pull into the area. Got a load of sort of crush maize and some hemp and all, all different bits and pieces in there. I'm going to put a few handfuls out over the top. Just try and draw them back into the area. Lovely and cloudy that mix. Few good handfuls. So you can say it's, it's going to pull calf in just if, just to be curious if nothing else. Hopefully, it's, it's a fish or two. Well, Tommy, that's a good idea to go right in the margin. I can see you can really target the bait, put it all in one big heap. But not that I've ever used them. I've got my own boat, but they use these bait boats, don't they? Do you actually have anything like that? Uh, yeah, I brought one one with me just to sort of show you what's what and whether. I say not everyone can walk around or sure. if, if you're a bit short on time and you ain't that great at casting but the fish are in certain areas. I think as long as you use them safely and don't literally drive them in the middle of a snag that you're never going to land a fish from. So all you're going to do is tether the fish. But if you use them safely and that then I don't see the problem with them. And, and what are they, you know, sort of boats like this? Like yeah, it? I've got one indoors about that one, but the one I've got with me is a bit bigger than that. Bigger? Yeah, I Let's could more or less sit in it and check take it, out. it for a spin. Oh, it's in the bag! Bloody hell! Yeah, it is the bag, more or less. I'll say it's, it's a proper bit of kit. Oh my god. X range for extreme range and a beep on the rod as well at the same time. That'd be yeah. something. That's the one we want beeping as well. The same, but it is sank a bit. That's an animal. Yeah. So, so we've, it is a bit, a bit overkill for what we're doing here, but I thought I'd bring it and just show you. Gives everyone an idea. And that's, that's what you call a bait boat. Yeah. yeah. I could use this one shark fishing, I think I could put my chum in there. That's a bit, a bit special. Yeah, got the little, little flag. So these must be a couple hundred pound a piece or something, I guess? Um, yeah, a bit more than that. Be more of what they're going to run out, something like this. Is, uh, it top, is this like a top of the range bait boat? Um, I'll, 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 yeah, it's, it's up there, I think. This, this one costs around about £750. What? I know. You, you get the sonar and... £750? Yeah, it's a lot of money, as I say. I, I don't really use them too often, but I thought... Is this the sort of thing that I read about where you have know, people go catfishing and, uh, and cart fishing on big places, Spain, France, is that the sort of way they'd use something like this? Yeah, the, the, the only reason, more or less, that we've got these are for sort of French trips. I see, yes. So we, if you fish waters, we, we just, my dad's. And um, if, if he's fishing a certain swim and it's that little bit too far, it, it, there's no point sitting all week on your holiday. What distance would you get with these, you know, with the radio control? How um, far can you run a bait? And... Pretty much as far as, far as you want to oh, go. Oh, really? Oh, I yeah. see. Farther than I'm going to cast, that's for sure. Yes, yeah, a lot farther than I'm going to cast. But it, I think it comes in handy. I know a lot of people sort of moan about them um, and class it as cheating. And but at the end of the day, it, you're fishing for yourself. Don't worry what anyone else thinks. Well, if you get you fishing, you might not otherwise exactly. catch. Exactly. That's the thing. What's I the can see the principle of, of it. You're putting the bait 
and your hook bait all in. It's like that sort of giant PVA bag in a way, and that's yeah. how I look at it, is you're concentrating your hook bait in amongst all the feed, but instead of being 120, 140 yards out, it's a long way out. Yeah. Well, so what's, the, what's the principle of it? How does it work? So, bit of a military operation getting this out, but then it is like a battleship. So say people class them as cheating and everything else, but end of the day, you can only fish for yourself and as long as you're happy and you're enjoying what you're doing. And I uh, guess and I guess pike fishing as well, don't forget. A you lot can of use people a, use them for pike. You know, for the pike dead are gonna be, they're gonna be around the snags, they're gonna be around undercuts, they're gonna be around other banks, they're gonna be where you can't get to them. Yeah. And let's face it, as I see this folks, you do not want to be casting your bait up in a tree because it's got wire and treble hooks for the birds. So these, as far as I can see for pipe fish, it might even be actually be safer than trying to cast too close to a snake. Yeah. And if you're using soft baits. If you, That's if true, you yeah. put a soft bait at distance and it's done, it's pieces. Yeah. Can't get much closer than that. It's fished safely. It's on the money. Hopefully it'll bring a fish. Can only try. Consider yourself a fisherman. Just how far do you want to take it? to this channel for more awesome videos. Right, we sort of had them a couple of fish earlier, but the, the bites have dried up. Just want to try something a little bit different now, sort of thinking outside the box, again trying to make it work for you. Um, all, all I'm going to do now is just make up a couple of baits that I've been doing really well on lately. Sort of, it's exactly the same ingredients as the actual boilies I'm feeding, except I ask for it to some paste before it's been boiled. And all, all that is, is the same as the take, it's the same bait that we've got on test at Bank Market at the minute, and it's, it's doing really well. So all I really want to do, a bit of paste, some cork balls, a pair of your nan's tights for do, a little bit of salt, and some hot water, and you can sit literally sit on a bank and make up some good hook baits that are going to catch your fish, hopefully. Right, take a little bit of pinch off the um, paste, little fingerprints up. All I then do is just roll it in the salt. So it's, it's not loads, I know salt's like the new big thing everyone's raving about, but I think during the spring, especially before they're starting to spawn and after they spawn, they, they do tend to crave it, so. I just want to say, again, working for you. Helps it break down that little bit quicker. Mold that all in, that's nice. Pinch that flat. 
what you want to do is get your cork ball, put it in the middle, mould it round. So you can tell like one end would be a little bit thicker, so just keep pinching off the excess that you don't need. You only want sort of two to three mil coating. Keep pinching off the excess. You want, you want an even coating around the cork ball, really. Right, the next trick is once you've got it more or less how you want it, a pair of tights, any women's tights would do. And then all I do is push that into the tights, so that's nice, nice and tight. And then just tying it off around it. You can see, you can just see the paste starting to push out the holes which is what you want really. Once it's tied off then you need obviously your dental floss again. That's all I'm going to do with that. Pull some off. Wrap it round. Nice and tight. Just to basically hold it all in place. Another one just for that. Get your pair of scissors again. Cut the two tag ends, making sure you cut them both together. Cut the tights off just below the knot. And then all you need to do, get your lighter, and I'll just blob that down. And then again, once this, the mesh is on, in your hand, you just want all the, the paces to start pushing through. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't even notice that it had mesh on it. So it looks like any other boilie. The real trick is, and the whole reason I'm meshing it, is I don't want to boil it for sort of two minutes. I just want to boil it at 30 seconds, and then it's done. Basically, all that will allow it to do is break down a lot quicker, and be, as I keep saying, be working for you. I want things to be happening all the time, especially if you're on sort of a time limit or anything else. So. In the boiling water it goes that we've got on. Right, once it's all rolled and everything else, it's going into the boiling water. Make sure you have a stop clock on the go, so you don't go over your time limit. So I want that for 30 seconds, so I'm starting from now. Job done. And that's that's ready to go. You can put that straight on your can cast that out. And say so it, it breaks down fairly quickly, but on short day sessions or you know, as long as you don't mind keep recasting, it will work for you and it will put that extra fish on the bank. Once you've done your baits, if you ain't gonna use them sort of straight on the go, you can always tie up a few and all I tend to do is get a load made in the pot with everything else. A bit of the krill oil, and all it does is soaks it all in and proper penetrates the bait, especially where it breaks down easy. And again, it's just another little tip to sort of hopefully pull some more extra fish into your swim. Yep. He's in. Fish on. That's no perch. No, that's not a perch. 
If it is, it's a hell of a big perch if it's got a bend like that. And what one was this one on? Was this the far bank that we did? That's the one that's just gone back out that we walked around and dropped it in. Yeah. I don't quite know what he's doing because he's coming back towards me. <laughs> it's not another perch. another perch. It's not another perch. I don't know what is going on here. He's it's still on? another perch, isn't it? Go on. Found me. There was definitely a fish on there. Yeah. Gonna have to put that one back out. Just lost the fish. What's going on there, Mike? Oh, she's only gone and... She's only... The, Mum's only gone and put the instructions. She's put the cup of tea in. Brand new flask. But you drank it? Yeah, I've been having some instructions with my tea. <laughs> so I, just been, spat you... it, I just spat it out thinking it was biscuits. No, bit of biscuits. Yeah. She's cooked the bloody instructions in there, look. What a woman, eh? Yeah. Do you know what the sad Don't thing trust is? them. The sad thing is, your mother, the worst thing is, I'm married to her. <laughs> look at it. Look at it. Oh. What a woman. Oh, dear. Lovely. We might have to scrounge a cup of tea off yeah, you, Tommy. Yeah, I think we'll get the kettle on. <laughs> Well guys, you've seen a lot of tips there from Tommy. Loads of tips, more than I can take on board. We're gonna pack up now, we've got quite a long drive. Tommy's got quite a long drive as well, but it just goes to show you that spring carp fishing is still on. You can still catch fish. Tommy, I know you're gonna be here again and we want to summon one out of you as well now. Oh, well, hopefully some of them tips can help put a fish on the bank for one of you. Um, until next time, just if it ain't happening, think positive and make it. Yeah.